Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a 737 pilot and in this video I'm going to teach you some of the basics of planning and executing a descent without the use of VNAV. We are right now sitting in a 737-800 at a gross weight of 62 tons and we are flying from Miami towards Barbados where we are going to execute this entire approach without the help of VNAV. That means let's take the aircraft out of VNAV and into altitude hold right now and then what I'm also going to do is to change the cruising altitude towards something very low so that VNAV information becomes unavailable for the descent. So disregard the top of descent information over there on the navigation display now. What we are going to do now is some very basic mathematics. So I'll give you guys a little cheat sheet over here, which is right this one. So, basic descent calculation is quite easy. You take three times your um, altitude above the aerodrome elevation. So we're currently cruising at 35,000 feet, which means we need to take 105 nautical miles. That is 35 times three. Then we add one nautical mile per 10 knots indicated above 200. In other words, we are going to use a descent speed of 245 knots and therefore we add roughly 5 miles, which gives us 110 miles for the descent. One nautical mile per 1000 feet above 60 tons of gross weight. As said, we are at 62 tons weight, so that means we add another 2 miles, leading us to 112. And then one mile per 10 knot of tailwind, or minus one mile per 10 knots of headwind. In our example right here, we are currently cruising with a little tailwind as we can see and if we go over to the progress page number two we can see a tailwind is seven knots so let's take that as um, let's take that as one nautical mile extra in other words for our mathematics we have 105 miles plus another five plus another two plus another one and that ends up at 113 nautical miles distance from our destination that we have to start our descent. Also, don't forget your QNH. The difference is approximately 30 feet per 1 hectopascals, and that means that at a QNH of 1023, for example, you have 300 feet extra to lose, which equates, looking into the rule above, into roughly one nautical mile. In our particular case, we are operating on an altimeter setting of 1017 today, so that difference is minimal and can be disregarded. To sum up, we need 113 nautical miles in order to lose our altitude. Now, there is something for you guys to be aware of. In the descent, we are checking our altitude using the formula above every 5000 feet, even if we are using VNAV. That is to cross-check that what VNAV is doing is actually accurate. In other words, for us, Regardless if we are using VNAV or not, we are still applying this formula. Below flight level 100, you have to check your altitude every 1000 feet, and that is something that airline pilots do even when operating under VNAV all the way, to make sure that the aircraft is actually performing accurately. Now, as said, we need 113 miles to lose our altitude, so let's go right into our simulator, take the aircraft off the pause, and then we adjust our descent accordingly. Now, what you can do is to use your fixed rings to draw a mile at 113 miles around your destination. But be aware when you do that, that your altitude information may or may not be accurate, depending on the number of track miles that you have in your FMC. In order to make VNAV a little bit yet less usable today, so that we don't get distracted by it, I've added a couple of extra track miles down here by inserting an approach with the procedure turn, which means that we get absolutely no usable information, provided I delete this one which I inserted as a quick reference earlier on. So here we go. Disregard everything from here. We are not going to use any of this and I have actually intentionally screwed the FMC over so that we don't get any usable information and are relying on the raw data modes. 
bear with me for using a little bit of time acceleration throughout the course of the video so that we can actually see the descent procedures in action. Also note, I have tuned Bridgetown VOR, which is located on the destination airfield in uh, radio number two, so that we get some additional information for our guidance on the descent. Also, keep an eye out for changes, especially in the wind, which might affect your flight. Okay, we are approaching our top of descent, as we are right now, 115 miles out, so let's start slowing our aircraft down to the target descent speed of 245 knots. This is only necessary in case you want to slow your airplane down to a speed that is slower than the cruise speed. Passing 113 miles, time to start our descent. Let's go to level change. Now there are several ways of how you can manually cross-check that you are actually performing as you wanted to. The first one is by looking at your level of banana or at your um, range to target altitude ring as it is called correctly. So as we reach our target speed and see the nose come down, we will start seeing the level of banana and you can use it to roughly cross-check where you're going to end up. So let's say we select the MCP all the way down to zero feet, then by the time the airplane has established a proper descent path, we will see the banana anywhere, probably slightly in front of the airport. But let's see what happens until the aircraft has stabilized. Okay, it remains slightly behind the airport which is a sign that possibly we are going to end up a little bit high. Now, I'm just going to select the final approach fix altitude over here of 3000 feet and with that we are going to commence our descent. We can already do the mathematics for our next altitude check, which is going to be at flight level 300. So thinking about what we have and what we need, at level 300 we will need a distance of 90 miles, that is three, 30 times 3, plus 5 to lose our speed, plus 1 for the wind and plus 2 for the, um, and plus two for the uh, gross weight. In other words, if we do this mathematic then we will figure out that we need 98 nautical miles by the time we are passing flight level 300. Now, as you can see, we're currently 98 nautical miles out, but you have probably noticed that we started our descent a little bit slow, and therefore we are a little bit high on profile right now. That absolutely makes sense, and therefore we know what's going on. Nonetheless, we still need to lose this altitude, so there are two ways of how you can do this without totally screwing yourself over. The first one would be the inefficient one, but the more, let's call it, pilot-friendly one, because you'll need to do less calculation. And that is simply to use a speed brake. Of course, using the speed brake is going to waste some energy, and you have already invested that energy, so you do want a return from it. In other words, if we are ending up high, then um, the better idea is to just increase your airspeed. Increasing the speed is going to increase your drag and thereby will make you descend much quicker. So I would opt for that option right now, seeing that we're approaching level 300 and we said we need 98 miles, so we're about 8 miles um, too close, which roughly converts into being 3000 feet high. Now. Let's do something about that by increasing our speed. I'll take the airplane all the way up to 300 knots, but be aware that this means I will have to redo my mathematics. So for the next check at 25,000 feet, we will now need 25 times 3, which is 75 miles, plus 10 miles for losing our airspeed, so 85, and then we still have our addition of approximately uh, three, 
knots for the wind and for the weight. So we need to be at roughly 83 miles when passing level 250. We can see that we are still slightly high, but we are closely approaching the profile. Also, another good indicator for us is that our range to altitude um, ring is now ahead of the airport, so that means that we are going to reach the 3000 feet that we have selected in front of the airport. Then we still need to add those. 10 miles that we'll need in order to reduce our speed, but that comes at a later point. For the next altitude, 20,000 feet, that means 60 miles plus 10 miles plus 3, so 73 miles when passing 20,000 feet. Let's see how that is going to work out. I guess it is quite easy to see that we are still a little bit high on profile, is it? So at this moment we could increase our speed once more, 330 knots, which is the maximum that we should use. And then we need to redo our calculation, so passing 20,000 feet, we should then have 60 miles plus 13 from our correction, plus another 3, so we should be at 76 miles. And you can see we are still running a little bit high on profile here. However, let's see how things are going to turn out by the time that we reach our expected um, flight level. Now, there is another way of doing those calculations that is quite easy as well. So, we can see we've got a distance of 67 nautical miles from our destination right now. On a direct course, that is, not taking into account any shortcuts or any or um, any extra miles, sorry, that is what I meant to say. And that is calculating the time we need to get there. So, we are doing 440 knots right now. If you divide that by 60, since 60 knots means one nautical mile per minute, we can then easily calculate that we are roughly doing 7 nautical miles per minute. And if we take the um, 62 miles we have up here, or let's say 63 for the ease of mathematics, it means we are going to need 9 minutes until Bridgetown VOR at the present speed. So 9 minutes, if you take your altitude from here, then you can roughly calculate how long you need in order to um, reach a certain waypoint and therefore re calculate the vertical speed required to cross that waypoint. Okay. Transitions. All right, from here on, let's do another mental cross check. So 15,000 feet means we have to have 45 miles plus 13 miles to lose the airspeed and we actually have headwind now so we can subtract one mile so 35 plus 12 47 miles but we have to add another two for the weight so we end up with roughly 49 miles when passing 15,000 as we can see, we are actually running low right now, below our, below our target um, path. That means we can decrease our speed once again in order to get back onto the path. Let's go all the way back to 245 knots, which is the default we are using for the descent. And then we can already mentally prepare for our next calculation. So at 10,000 feet then we need 30 miles plus 5 to lose the speed plus 2 due to the weight. So we need roughly 
37 miles when we are passing 10,000 feet. So as the airplane is currently reducing its airspeed, there is something for us to take into account. And that is, of course, we have all the time calculated our direct distance to the destination airport. But as you can see, this is our extended centerline here, so we need to add a couple extra track miles. Now, those of you who are very good at mathematics can surely calculate it exactly, but I'm just making my life easy and I'm just doing it this way. We have our range rings on the navigation display. With the scale currently set to 40, that means every one of these is 20 miles. In other words, from here to here is roughly 20 miles, to here is 20 miles, and then this waypoint up there is on 10 mile final, so we have 50 miles in order. Um, 50 miles to run to our descent. It does help if you anticipate how many miles you are actually going to get by asking air traffic control. Of course, in real life, you would just ask your captain if uh, he has any experience flying to that airport and uh, if he knows what kind of routings you may expect. But since that is typically not available in Flight Simulator, just ask air traffic control in case you're flying online. And in case you're flying offline, just take some rough guesstimates. Like, on this one, I would expect to go straight ahead over here and then take a shortcut like this, so something like this. You can see I already created that waypoint over here to account for shortcut. But for the sake of simulation, let's take a direct to the 10 mile final right now, which is going to be the center fix for Rome 09. And that is inserted. Elnaf is taking us all the way there, and at the same time, we can update our mental model and calculations. Looking at the progress page in the FMC, we can see the remaining track miles down here, which right now is 44 miles. In other words, let's do the calculations. 12,000 times 3 makes 36, plus 5 knots is 42, plus 2 knots for the um, weight, but then again minus 2 knots for the wind. So we end up roughly in the region of... Um, 41 miles, well we've had 44, so right now we have 42 miles, we are, we've just passed 12,000, so we are pretty much right on profile. Our range to altitude ring is of course really helpful here as well, as it tells us exactly where we are going to reach the select the target altitude, and if you have a look at this, it roughly matches up, reaching 3,000 feet at the 10 mile ring. And if you all of a sudden say, hey, that's actually quite easy, then yes, it is. So we discussed a couple of techniques on how to descend if you are high on profile. Obviously, if you are low on profile, just slow down your vertical speed in order to reach one of those targets that you can calculate for yourself. A good start there would be 1,000 feet a minute in order to um, reach your target check altitudes that you have calculated. So for us, next up is going to be flight level 100, so 30 miles plus 5. The wind pretty much cancels out the effect from the weight, so let's say we need to be at 35 miles when we are passing flight level 100. Looking down here. We're at 35 miles right now, crew, landing. which and means that we are precisely on profile. Next up, 9,000 feet. 9 times 3, 28, plus 5 means 32 nautical miles. 
We're at 32 right now. We still have 300 to go, so we're probably a tiny bit high right now. So let's go ahead and give it a little bit of a speed break, provided that um, this number doesn't change. Okay, it just changed 32 miles when 9,100 feet. That is in limit still. Next up, 8,000. 8 times uh, 3 is going to give us 24 plus 5, so 29 miles. The wind pretty much cancels out the weight once again, so we're looking at 25 miles when passing 8,000 feet. In the meantime, let's quickly do the approach checklist. Okay, hit the wrong button there. I didn't mean to extend the flaps yet, so I have retracted them once again. Okay, 7,000. Let's do the calculation. 7 times 3, 21 plus 5, 26 miles. At 24 right now, so that's a good indicator to use a bit of speed brake in order to get us down. The next thing we need to think about is when do we want to start slowing down for the approach. When you are using the uh, manual methods without using any VNAV, then approximately 6000 feet is a good moment to start reducing your airspeed to 220 knots. So let's do some calculations. 6000 times 3 gives us 18 plus then only two knots means that we want 6,000 at 20 miles. So we are passing 6,000 now at 21, so we'll keep the speed brake out for a little bit and we'll start reducing our airspeed towards 220 knots. Next up 5,000 then. It's 5 times 3, 15 plus 2 for the speed being uh, 20 knots above 200 gives us 17 miles when we're at 5,000 feet. In other words, we're now at 19, so we're going to keep the speed brake out for a little bit longer. And as we're getting close to the airport, what we can do is use the um, standby instruments in order to monitor our glide slope. Now, it seems like over here we don't receive any glide slope yet, but in many places you already will, so that way you can use the um, glide slope to monitor where you are. On the base leg, you basically can accept being right on it. Flight deck. Thank you. Alright, so we're at 5000. The glide slope is just coming alive. We are pretty much on it. So let's still the speed brake. And we can start slowing down our airplane a little bit further. So let's go back to the up speed. And from here we are now primarily using the glide slope as a reference. Obviously, if you were to come in for a non-precision approach, you would have to use other references. So you could consider uh, continuing with this model, or you could just calculate the time to your final approach fix by um, taking the ground speed divided by 60, that is the amount of minutes you need, and then calculating with your rate of descent, always taking into account that you still have to slow the airplane down. So we are turning final. We are just below the glide slope, so we are perfectly on profile. Let's get out the flaps. It is a good idea as you are about to turn final to get the airplane into a flap 5 Sorry. configuration. Or at least something that gets you a speed that is roughly in the region below 180 knots. Your ideal next target is to cross 10 miles from the airport, 3000 feet above the field elevation provided you have a 3 degree glide. 
and at a speed that equals approximately 180 knots. As we can see, we are perfectly established on that right now. Next up, we need to consider our energy management on the arrival. So we have a 20 knot headwind almost at the moment, which makes our life really easy. However, if you did want to, however, if you um, did want to fly a little bit faster, you should do a maximum of 200 knots ground speed when passing the 10 mile ring, maximum of 190 knots by 9 miles, 180 by 8, 170 by 7, and so on. So that way you can calculate your deceleration profile on the final approach. For us, that is not necessary anymore because we can see we are only at 160 knots while passing 10 miles from the airfield right now. So for me, that concludes this tutorial. I hope that you have learned something out of this. And if you did, then do let me know in the comments what you think about it. I would like to thank you very much for joining and would like to take this final opportunity to point you guys to the new channel membership that I've just introduced. A lot of my videos will become available for channel members initially before eventually being released as some um, general public videos a short moments later. And there are also some goodies like exclusive wallpapers. And finally, in the um, first class membership, also the, re the ability for you guys to request new videos. That's going to be it from my side for this tutorial. I would like to thank you very much and hope that you have enjoyed it. And I look forward to welcome you all again very soon.